All right, this is the Phantom, and we're here on the convention floor at Bowl Expo 2012 in Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the world. And this is a version of Phantom Radio. And with me, I have my good friend and sidekick, Jim Dressel. Jim, how you doing? I'm doing uh, okay, but my side is getting a little sore from you kicking it all the time. That's kind of funny. You said that four times ago. You know, people are going to know that. You think they remember it last <laughs> time no. I said it? <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a special guest with us today, and we're very fortunate to have a lot of the, and I use the word bigwigs, uh, shakers, movers, breakers, and makers. I made up that myself. With us is David Garber, who has been in charge of a lot of different things over the years in the industry, and now he's the director of bowling for Stations Casinos in Reno. Las Vegas. I mean, in Las Vegas. Vegas. I thought I was in Vegas all this time. <laughs> I thought I was the one supposed to make all the mistakes. <laughs> David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. An honor, actually. So... Yeah, he is uh, really has grown tall. I think he's wearing elevator shoes. I'm not sure. But uh, things are going pretty well for you. You're keeping busy in your new position. I am. It's a very uh, interesting position because I am looked at as uh, one of the, the people that when they have bowling questions, they come to me or the, the bowling managers. And I seem to be the lead person. But, uh, you know, the bowling managers we have are incredible. And uh, so we're a really tight family in a big casino company. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard being a slot company. And we're a little bit of bowling. But we do make a difference in the in the uh, casino business. So, I'm sure you do. So let's identify stations, casinos. Okay. Which bowling centers are you involved with? Well, we have Texas Station, Santa Fe Station, Sunset, and Red Rock. Red Rock's been the most recent host of the Tournament of Champions for the last five years. And Sunset Station has had the team trials or the Masters in the last four years. So... Um, you know, we have a strong presence with a lot of national events and international events. And frankly, a lot of people are getting their first impression of Red Rock because of that. And uh, the superlatives are really uh, all over the place. They're, wow, this is great, whatever. So you're getting a lot of plaudits on that installation, along with the other, obviously, the other installations as well. We absolutely are. In fact, we just finished the Hall of Fame extravaganza event, which was a big fundraiser for the Hall of Fame. We raised over $20,000 for the Hall of Fame. First year tournament, we only ended up with 80 teams, 80 doubles teams, but it was the perfect size, and it was the, it was the most fun tournament I've worked at in a long time because nobody complained about lane conditions, nobody complained about handicaps or anything, and everybody had a blast. It was such a refreshing event to be a part of for a change, and Red Rock was the absolute crown jewel of that too. So Pat Sanello and the whole entire John Lacito and the whole entire Hall of Fame staff were a pleasure to work with, and we look forward to nine more years of that and growing it bigger. That's awesome. You know, I'm quite familiar with Stations Casinos over the years. I've been involved in some tournaments with all of those bowling centers. And you being the director of bowling, corporate, I know each and every one of those places has a good general bowling manager. But you must be more involved with tournaments and things like that. Absolutely. My, my ultimate goal is to get people heads and beds. That's my thing is I need to get people to Las Vegas. And we have great bowling centers to be able to host and run tournaments. And we bring in the international folks. We bring in the domestic folks. We're looking to try and fill with sweeper bowlers also from California, all over the United States with a new turnkey program that we're doing that's a bowl your way to Vegas League. And uh, it's, it's going to be a really cool thing. So, I know that you, know, you have a lot of input as far as the bowling activity in all of the properties as far as uh, bowling is concerned. But... Uh, you, how do you justify? I mean, it's not as if you say, hey, let's do this or let's do that because I think it's a good idea. You have to have an actual business plan, correct? Absolutely. Every tournament or event we try and bring in, we have to do it pro forma. I have to sell it to the assistant general manager and the general manager, have the bowling center manager's approval, have the sales director's approval, and the VP of hotels approval. So I go through a very extensive vetting program of trying to get an event that makes sense to 
a, a casino property because we are not in the charity business. We are in the business of making money, and that that was a big difference from working with the USBC, where it was a nonprofit organization, great organization. I learned a ton from them, but it was very unique that. Um, a lot of the membership complained when USBC actually made money off of them, and that's what casinos do. And that's what all businesses run off of is making money off of other people. I got a related question, if you will, and that is: Has the attitude of the station casinos? I know it was very favorable before, but has it changed, plus, yay or nay, uh, since you took over and brought a lot of new activity to the places? Uh, th they realize that there <clears throat> there was a lot of business out there that they weren't capturing that other companies within Las Vegas were getting their hands on. Um, and since the, the economy turned down in 2007, they've needed to look for different generations of money and, and this is where they found it. And bowling has is, is always come out to support and we're lucky that bowlers are gamblers and bowlers are NASCAR fans and, and it all ties in together. So um, they really appreciate it and they are they're sticking with the bowling and they, they they love it. So Kevin Kelly, our, our president and CEO, loves bowling. So. so David, I'm a tournament director, and I've got a group of people that uh, come to my tournaments every month. If I want to bring a tournament to you, how would I get a hold of you to let you know? You, you can call me at my office number or cell number. It's 702-495-4249, uh, or just email me, david.garber at stationcasinos.com and I'd be more than happy to entertain or, or look at anything so it's uh, we, we have diversity groups across the board doesn't matter what average high low uh, doesn't matter if it's Igbo members it doesn't matter if it's TMBA members we want bowlers and uh, it, you know especially seniors seniors have the free time we love to do things for seniors slot tournaments and and everything so besides bowling they have tournaments for us, Lenny. What do you think? Well, I'm a super senior. I know that. Oh, okay. Sorry. You know, speaking of seniors, I understand there's a brand new monstrous tournament coming up in December. Yep. Why don't you explain all that to us? Yeah, my uh, my comrade Joan Romeo and I have uh, been working on this uh, International Senior Open, and uh, it's it's something that was created about 10 years ago in Reno by USA Bowling and Joan Romeo, um, and we were recreating it to start it at Red Rock, um, and it's basically a entry fee of $300. It includes your singles, doubles, team event, and if you make it into the Masters, uh, all those entry fees are bind into that with a banquet get picked up at the airport, you get delivered back to the airport, so it's an all-encompassing uh, type program. Uh, we have re-entries into singles and doubles. It's going to pay some money, but it's more about bowling for the honor of your country and winning medals. Um, so as of right now, we have 20 people from Australia signed up. We're looking at about 30 to 50 from Japan, and uh, we've gotten numerous people from the United States. So but we're only limited to 60 teams and uh, 240 bowlers. So, How much uh, creativity do you have in your job? In other words, do you find yourself doing a lot more creating tournament uh, uh, programs, or do you find people approaching you with the idea of trying to accommodate their group or tournament group or whatever? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, to get immediate results, though, I was... I was able to create some tournaments called the Madness Events, where we, we charged $99 and they got a room, two room nights included, and then they were bowling for seven, $7,777 for first and $3,333 for second, and it's a handicap event, it's a fun, we even did a Cosmic Squad that has been our biggest entry draw every Saturday night. Everybody bowls in the glow in the dark with the music and and that squad equals one of the cuts into the tournament. And people are loving it because it's they make it like a date night, and but yet they're bowling for money and prizes. So, um, you know, it's it's been a little bit of both. But in the bowling business, as you know, uh, people plan a year or two years out to try and get uh, uh, tournaments secured. So my, my range has been a three-year range. And uh, uh, one of the big ones that we captured right off the bat was the World Championships coming up next year at uh, Sunset Station. It's going to be a gigantic combined championship. So, You know, you just mentioned planning things. And when I saw the list of guests that we were going to have, 
I remember about six months ago, I got this big thing on, my, on email about this International Seniors Open that you're having. And it was very in-depth. Uh, are you going to be sending those out more um, updated press releases, so to speak? Absolutely. We have bulletin number two ready that's going to be hitting the media here very soon. Um, once we get done with Bowl Expo, it's been crazy. We, you know, we had the Hall of Fame extravaganza. So now that that's past us, we can focus on the International Senior Open. Uh, we're going to be doing some promotions with uh, Bowling Digital, with Herbert Bickle and his website to uh, win entries into the events, win upgrades for your rooms, uh, just to try and uh, build the exposure for the event. As you know, first-year events are always the toughest to get off the ground. But we're going to do it, and we've been successful. We will get it off the ground. So one last time, that's December 2nd to the 8th? Yep. And they can get a hold of you how? Once again, they can go to stationcasinolanes.com, and we have the bulletin number one and number two on the website right now. Or you can contact uh, me at david.garber at stationcasinos.com. This uh, affiliation you have now, I, th I think back to when you were affiliated with the USBC and, you know, some of your other situations. And I got to believe you got a new passion that I've never seen before in David Garber. That was, uh, you know, this has got to be an exciting situation for you. This is fun. This is because I'm learning the casino business. I'm learning the hotel. So I'm, I'm branching out. And, uh, you know, I've always loved bowling, and every time I've tried to get out of the bowling industry, it's pulled me right back in, which I'm grateful for because it's done a lot to my life, uh, positive things in my life. So, uh, but this is, this is a fun, challenging job to try and prove to casino people that bowling matters and that bowlers like to gamble and like to have a good time. All right. Well, we've only got about a minute or so left. I think it will give the stage to David if he's got any closing remarks. Anything he wants to say, you got it, Pards. Well, I, I really appreciate the time again. This is this is an honor. So um, please check out our website, stationcasinolanes.com. Uh, contact me. Come by our booth at Bowl Expo or just go to any of our casinos, Sunset Station, Red Rock, Texas, or Santa Fe. Once again, we're doing a big turnkey event about uh, Bowl Your Way to Vegas where you can bowl for money. You can join other leagues from around the United States and uh, have a party. And basically uh, three nights, four days in Vegas. So it's a nice vacation. Well, we had a nice little party with you on the show. So thanks for showing up. And I'll turn it back over to Len to do the close. Len, I'm the Phantom. Don't you remember who I am? Oh, darn who's this, it. Who's this escapes Len? my memory all the time. You know, yeah. And Lenny's got great fond memories of Red Rock, too. That's where yeah. he was inducted into the Hall of Fame right oh, there. Oh, right, right. Wow. So. Don't that make the hair on my arm stand <laughs> up. Come on, David. That was the coolest. Yep. I, it was not very important, but it was January 22nd, 2011 at 815. <laughs> how, could any, <laughs> how could any of us forget, especially those who heard your speech, oh, Lenny? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he started at 815. He got done at 10 o'clock, I think. Something was that? like that. <laughs> the next <laughs> morning. That's my bedtime. <laughs> All right, David, appreciate you coming on. Best of luck. Continued success with all that you do. Thank you. Okay.